Hello and welcome to Nana's Crafty Home. My name is Tanya. Today's tutorial is going to show you how to make the gnome towel topper that you can find as a free pattern on my website. This works up really quickly. It's a perfect project for Christmas or any time of the year depending on what uh, colors you use. Uh, this one would be appropriate year round with this um, like a sage green color that I used. Uh, the great thing about this project is that this towel is removable. We're putting a ring inside that hat, which then makes it where this towel can be easily removed and thrown in the wash and no need to wash your towel topper. So we need a few supplies to get started and we're going to be using three different colors of yarn. So I have a main color here for the hat. I used a white for the trim around the hat and then I have a blush color for his nose. Uh, you're just going to be using small amounts of each of these colors, really scrap amounts of these, uh, the trim and the nose and just a small amount of your color A for your hat. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be using uh, some Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton in uh, red for the hat, and I'm going to be using white for the trim and then a blush color for his nose. Um, you would not have to use cotton for this project. Uh, this isn't going to be uh, used as a pot holder or anything like that. So you could certainly uh, use acrylic if you'd like. Um, really any yarn of your choosing would be perfectly fine. Uh, you're also going to need just a small amount of polyfill or fiber fill for his nose. Uh, you're going to need a button for the hat. The button is uh, I've used different sizes. I've used this um, button here, uh, which is about three quarters of an inch round. Uh, this one's about a half inch round. That's a little flatter than this one. You can see this one's actually like a ball, uh, but that's whatever you find that works for you. It's uh, really just using that. Uh, it needs to be large enough so that you can uh, hold the top of the hat in place when you put it on your, your stove. Uh, you're also going to need a plastic ring. I have a three inch wide ring here. Um, it doesn't have to be plastic. If you can find a metal ring that you like, uh, it can be a little thinner than this one. I did like the three inch size. I did prefer that. Uh, I felt that it made it easier to work that towel in and out of the ring easily. Uh, but you could probably go a little smaller than three inches and you still would be okay. You're also going to need a size H or a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook, some embroidery thread, uh, just a small amount to sew on your button, stitch marker as we're working through our hat and our nose because we're going to be working in seamless rounds, and then a, a tapestry needle to weave in your ends, sew on your nose. Uh, so to start our hat, I'm going to make a magic circle with my color A, which is the red in this case. And I'm going to chain one with six single crochets in that magic circle. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to place a stitch marker in that first stitch that I made. I don't want to lose track of it because I am going to be working in seamless rounds. So there will be no slip stitch join at the end of every round. So I'm going to pull that magic circle closed. And for round two, I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch around. So I'm going to maintain my stitch count and just work one single crochet in every stitch. Move my stitch marker up to the first stitch that I made for this round and single crochet in the remaining stitches.
So verify your stitch count. You still have six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm ready to move on to round three. And round th three is my repeat round. So I will be repeating this round for several rounds. <clears throat> and I'm going to work two single crochets in that first stitch that I have marked from the beginning. I'm gonna move my stitch marker up to that first stitch that I made. And then I'm going to work one single crochet in the remaining stitches. So I'm working only one increase for each round. So your stitch count will increase by one for every round. So I should have seven stitches for round three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So for rounds four through 22, I'm going to continue repeating round three two single crochets in the first stitch. Move up your stitch marker to the first stitch made of each round. And then one single crochet in the remaining stitches. Increasing your stitch count by one for every round. So go ahead and continue repeating round three through round 22, and then we will be adding in our uh, ring. Once we've completed round 22, we will have a total stitch count of 26 stitches. We're ready to move on to round 23, in which we bring in our ring. So we're gonna start out just as we have been normally uh, with two single crochets in that first stitch, moving up our stitch marker to the first stitch of this round. And then we're going to work one single crochet in the next 20 stitches. One, so then we're going to be working the next five stitches over this ring. So we're going to be bringing the ring up, inserting our hook into the next stitch, bringing that ring and putting it over our hook, and finishing that single crochet around that hook. So there's the first one, inserting our hook into the next stitch, bringing up our loop, completing the next single crochet. So that's two. There's three. There's four. And there's five. And that is the last stitch of that round and we move on to round 24. Again, two single crochets in the first stitch. And this is gonna be a little awkward or feel a little awkward at first, but no worries. It'll get a little bit better as we move along. So now we're going to be working one single crochet over the next 21 stitches until we get to the stitches that we worked over that ring. And what we're going to do is we're going to work what are called spike single crochet stitches, and we're gonna be working over the single crochets that we worked in the previous round. That is going to give it a little bit more stability. You aren't gonna to have to worry about those stitches um, coming out or anything like that because you're putting weight on that ring by putting your towel in there. You really want to have a lot of 
stability with it. So we're going to work those stitches over top of those previous stitches. So So once we get to those five stitches, you can see here I have those five stitches that have been worked over the ring. One, two, three, four, and five. This is my last one without. And once I get to those five stitches, you can see where that stitch was worked into that row previously. And I'm going to insert my hook into the base of that single crochet and I'm going to finish my single crochet by working around that ring again pulling up my hook my loop and finishing my single crochet inserting my hook into the base of that single crochet from the previous row that was worked around that ring so at the base of that single crochet and finishing that single crochet the next one And the next, and the next. So I've worked one, two, three, four, and five single crochets over that ring. And that is really giving a lot of stability. You can see those stitches have been worked over that ring. So I have two sets of stitches worked over that ring, and that ring isn't going to go anywhere. So moving on to round 25, we're simply going to be working two single crochets in that first stitch. Moving up our stitch marker to our first stitch of this round and then working one single crochet in every stitch. And this is going to be our repeat again through round 38. So we're just going to be continuing on that same pattern through round 38. After we've completed round 38, we're going to have a total of 42 stitches. And we'll be ready to switch to our color B for our trim edging for the hat and when we get to these spike stitches from the previous row we're just working in the top of those single crochets So just continue on. So I have completed round 38 with 42 stitches. I'm ready to begin that hat trim or border. And I'm going to be bringing in my color B, which is the white, and finishing the last stitch of round 38. And to begin round 39, we're going to turn our work. I'm going to be working a bobble stitch, and the bobble will be showing on the back side of the work, so we want that bobble to show on the right side of our hat. So by turning our work, I'm going to chain three, one, two, and three, and I'm going to double crochet in that same stitch. So the base of that chain three, work a double crochet, slip stitch, into the next stitch, bobble in the next. And a bobble is worked by yarning over, inserting our hook into the next stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop. Three loops on our hook, yarning over, pulling through two loops, leaving two loops on our hook, yarning over, inserting our hook into the same stitch, yarning over, pulling up, pulling up a loop, four loops on our hook, yarning over, pulling through all four loops. Slip stitch into the next stitch, bobble in the next, yarning over, inserting our hook, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over, pulling through two, 
yarning over, inserting our hook into the same stitch, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over, pulling through all four. Slip stitch in the next. And that is your repeat. Bobble in the next, slip stitch in the next. And see what an effect you get on the right side of your work, this really cute bobble stitch. So just continue that around, working a bobble in the next stitch, slip stitch in the next, all the way around. Once we've worked our final stitch, we're going to slip stitch to the base of that first stitch and then fasten off. We're going to weave in our ends and then put the loop on the top of our hat, the holder. So for the loop, I'm going to come back to my color A, my red, and I'm going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch to form a ring. Fasten off, leaving a little bit of a longer tail so I can sew that to the top of the hat. So this is just going to get sewn to the top of the hat here. All right. So with those tails on my tapestry needle, I'm going to push that needle down through the top of my hat. Once I've pushed those yarn strands through, I'm ready to go ahead and weave in these ends. and make sure that that is nice and secure to the top of my hat. So I have my loop attached to the top of my hat. All of my ends are woven in and we're ready to attach our button. So I have my needle, brought on my embroidery thread that I'm gonna to use to sew on that button. I have my button that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna measure approximately four and a half inches down from the top of that hat. So measure, and I'm going to be attaching that button on the front side of the hat. Where the hook is attached is the back of the hat. So you can see on the back, these are those spike stitches that we worked over the bottom of that ring. So we want that to the back of the hat. So I'm going to be attaching the button to the front, measuring down about four and a half inches, so right about there. attach that button and just sew it on. Just make sure that it's nice and secure with several passes through. When you're satisfied with how stable that button is, you're going to knot your embroidery thread, thread off and then you'll be able to bring down that loop and it will go around your button just like that. All right, so we've completely finished our hat and we're ready to begin the nose. And I'm going to start with getting my color C, which is my blush or peach color, magic circle and I'm going to work six single crochets in that magic circle. So chaining one and one, 
two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to tighten that magic circle up a bit. And I'm going to place a stitch marker in that first stitch. And I'm going to be moving that stitch marker up for every round. So for round two, I'm going to work two single crochets in each stitch. So in that first stitch, work two single crochets, moving up your stitch marker to the first stitch. And again, this is going to be working in seamless rounds, so no slip stitch join at the end of every round. So two in the next, and in every stitch. So I'm going to end up with 12 stitches at the end of this round. All right, so round two is complete. I'm going to work one single crochet in the first stitch for round three. Moving up my stitch marker and in the next two. So the first three stitches I'm going to work one single crochet and then I'm going to work two single crochets in the next and I'm going to repeat that sequence around. So. Now for round four, I'm going to work one single crochet in each stitch. So my stitch count will remain the same, 15, at the end of this round. And you will again have 15 stitches for that round. So for round five, I'm going to do one single crochet in the first three stitches, moving up our stitch marker, and now I'm going to work a uh, decrease, so I'm going to work two single crochets together. So I'm going to insert my hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop. I'm not going to finish that single crochet, I'm going to insert my hook in the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop. Now I'm going to finish that by yarning over and pulling through all three. So I've decreased by one stitch. Now I'm going to work one single crochet in the next three stitches and a single crochet two together over the next two, single crochet over the next three, and single crochet two together at the end, and you will have 12 stitches at the end of that round. So we're at the final round of our nose, but before I work on that last round, you're going to want to tuck in this last, the beginning end here from where we started before we stuff that nose. Once we've woven in that end, we're ready to start round six, and this will be our last round of the nose. We're going to be getting smaller throughout this round as I'm going to be doing nothing but decreases, and I'm going to want to stuff the nose before it gets too small, and I'm not able to stuff it. So I'm gonna be working um, two single crochets together over all of these stitches. So six times you're going to be working two single crochets together and this opening on the back of the nose here is going to get small pretty fast. So just continue working single crochets two together. And probably do one more set and go ahead and stuff that nose. You can see how the opening has gotten pretty small. 
So I'm taking some of my fiber fill here and just shoving that in there. You aren't going to need much. But you want it nice and full. So get as much in there as you can without stretching your stitches too much. And then you're going to work your final single crochet two together. So we're going to fasten off I'm going to pull that yarn through from that last stitch, remove that stitch marker, and now I'm going to close the nose completely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that yarn on my hook and then I'm going to weave my yarn in each of these front loops from that final row and pull tightly at the end. So just picking up that front loop every stitch and then when you're done pull it tightly and then you can weave in this end. Passing off and my nose is done here. So now we're going to be sewing this nose to the bottom of the hat and I'm going to be using a length of my red. So whatever your main color of your hat is, you're just going to cut a nice long length. And you're gonna place the nose in the center of your hat. It's going to be underneath that lip because you want the top of that hat to kind of come down over top of it. You want it in the middle too. And you're gonna hold that in place and you're gonna pick up some stitches at the top and the back of that nose and come up through the top of that hat. Make sure and leave enough of an end here so that you can weave this in and then you're going to come up here and go down, pick up a couple of stitches from the nose, make sure you're grabbing stitches from the nose and coming back up. But because I'm using the main color, to do this, you're not going to see those stitches. And you just want to secure that in place. You want that nose to be nice and secure. done a few stitches kind of evaluate so lay your hat out do you like where the hat is resting on the nose because remember your towel is going to be back behind your nose Come back around. And do one more pass. Just really want that to be nice and secure.
So that looks pretty good to me. And now you can just go ahead and weave in your ends. All right, so our nose is sewn on securely. We're ready to add our towel. And again, remember we have that ring here. So I'm using a tea towel. I like how those look with this gnome. And you can just put your towel in the ring. Really easy to remove and add. And then the hat just kind of folds down over the towel and the nose just sits on top of that towel. So it makes that towel look like his beard. And it just sits on there really nicely and it's really easy to remove that towel to wash. And then you can hang it anywhere you wish. So that's all there is to it. I hope you've enjoyed this pattern. Thank you so much for being with me today. As always, if you have any questions about any of my patterns, feel free to reach out to me at nanascraftyhome at gmail.com. You can also find me on social media on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and I love to see your projects. So if you do share any of uh, my patterns that you've made, remember to add a hashtag Nana's Crafty Home so that I can find your beautiful creations. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you never miss a new video. Thanks so much, guys. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.